Oh, and I will also add, I forgot to make this comment, that our utilities will be put on automatic monthly payments. Now, as I introduce our treasurer, John Pizartzis, he's going to start the presentation of stewardship and the financials. the former treasurer is here. I'd like to thank Peter for his ongoing support in the transition process and for always being there for whatever we have needed um, you know, this year. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, secondly, you know, I may be here speaking, but Nick could have been here just as well. Nick, Nick is, has title of the assistant treasurer, but really there's two of us. And without Nick, it would have been, you know, it would have been a real challenge, particularly with, you know, lack of office management, because we had a transition there too, just to keep, um, you know, to keep everything in order. And I greatly, I told him earlier today in close quarters how grateful I am that, you know, he's around and, and, and you know, as involved as I am. And, and I'd like to acknowledge that um, uh, more broadly. Thank you. Um, yeah. And to his wife, please. <laughs> Thank you. From one wife to another. And, uh, yeah, the, the, the takeaway here really is that um, we're, we're not doing poorly. We're, we're doing pretty well in terms of stewardship, but we are, I need to say, we, we are uh, behind schedule uh, when we compare to where we were uh, last year at this time of year. So last year we were about $630,000 uh, in stewardship and, and this year thus far we're at 322. So we're a bit behind uh, and we're also behind uh, the approved budget. You may recall that towards the end of last year we approved the budget for this year. I think everyone um, you know, was part of that. Um, we're a bit behind budget. And now it's not you know, terrible. I'm sure we'll be making it up, but, but it's something that we need to um, uh, be cognizant of. Um, there are, as, as you see, there's 588 active uh, stewardship uh, families. The stewardship statements uh, did go out. Um, some of them had some, some um, corrections that needed to be made. It has to do with the fact that you know, we're, we're uh, adapting to the systems. If we saw a list of, I don't know, maybe 20 systems uh, that, that, you know, ha have been part of this, um, this process. Um, we are, I think, at a good point now, and hopefully, you know, going forward, um, there will be, uh, the, the statements going out will be, will, will, uh, will be accurate. Um, yeah, the, the other thing, uh, to note is that whereas in the past, right, uh, up until uh, last year, uh, interest rates were low. So, so we had, you know, historically, in fact, they were really low. Uh, we had non-interest bearing accounts because, you know, there, you, there was no interest provided in, in accounts. But because there's rising interest rates, what we did this year is we created uh, two new accounts. Uh, they're actually money market accounts, but with a lot of flexibility in terms of putting money in and taking money out. One such money market account is the operating money market account. So we're keeping a lot of our operating um, balances in that account so they can accrue interest uh, at 4%. Uh, it's something we've negotiated. It's usually reserved for new clients. Uh, that's what banks have but, you know, they, they, to attract new clients. They have a higher interest rate, but we did explain to our banks that, you know, we do have options and we may uh, indeed opt to, to, to go to a different bank. So we were able to negotiate um, the, the sort of the high uh, money market rate that's available in, in the market. So um, we are also, uh, for the most part, uh, moving in the lion's share of our restricted fund into a restricted money market uh, account. So with the, um, uh, with, with those two simple moves, um, I, I think we stand to gain uh, in the neighborhood of $37,000 in interest income per, per year. Good. So, so that's, uh, yeah. Um, this is 
uh, and, and you have, you probably got very detailed um, P&Ls um, as you're coming in. This is just a, a summary. The red the down arrow is something I, I noted before. It's nothing new. It's our stewardship. It's not where, it's not at the levels that, um, uh, that, that we thought it should be at this time of year. Uh, but hopefully that'll, um, you know, that'll rebound. Uh, and in terms of our um, total income, our total income is higher than we expected. I, the, the, um, the, there's two, two columns that I draw your attention, one that has the circles around the actual, that's what we've actually done between January and, and the end of May. And to the right of it, the budget, it's the budget that was approved by, by the General Assembly at the end of the last year. So, so that's the comparison there. So we're doing well in terms of total income uh, compared to the budget. Uh, despite the fact that our, our stewardship was, was uh, slightly down, uh, and also in terms of net operating income and in terms of net income as well. Uh, this is our balance sheet. The only two items that I'm sort of interested in and I, I focus on is, is our cash account, which is pretty robust at $1.8 million, um, and the fact that we're the liability of debt. We're, we're pretty much at zero because of the burn the mortgage campaign that took place. And I think, you know, it's a huge thank you to the entire community that, that um, and the, the organizing in the community that, that um, helped uh, make that happen. So we're debt free and, and have considerable cash balances. And, and at this point, I'll just uh, turn it back to uh, Andrea to take us through the uh, capital uh, Thank you, I, I have to tell you, these, these two gentlemen, as treasurer and assistant treasurer, not only are they here working, they're taking personal leave from their jobs to come in and do these numbers. And we're all a little crazy texting at 1 o'clock in the morning, double checking with one another to make sure everything is sound. So, thank you. And at this time, what I do want to do is ask all the parish council members to stand up. I'm going to put you all on the spot because I have to thank each and every one of you. This is the leadership, and we are so thankful to have such a dream team. Absolutely. Thank you. And just a little bit of trivia. 25 years ago, when I served on the parish council, Mr. John Callender was the president at that time. <laughs> it's nice to see the cotton move. See the youth get involved and take over. Thank you, Andrew. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so I did jump the gun because on the agenda we do, I would like you to all take a look at the minutes. The minutes are stapled behind the financials in your packet. And just take a look because I would like to approve the minutes today. If there's no questions, I'd like to make a motion to pass. Peter Abarinos is making the first motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second motion? I second. John Sigalides is making the second motion. All in favor to approve the minutes? Oh, Aye. Uh, Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Now moving on. Our capital improvement for 2023. Our buildings are old. <laughs> and we have to take care of them. They have to be repaired and maintained. Um, so we have been working diligently to obtain proposals on replacing our air conditioning systems. And we are looking at the needs, not the wants, the necessities. We're, times run out for these air conditioning systems. Some of them were installed in 77. So that gives us some perspective. When I attended the farewell event for Marilena, we have two systems that support the gym. The last remaining system went down, and we had someone call, come, came, he shut down the system, rebooted it. We have one compressor out of four cooling the gym. So that's where we are right now. So looking at the Various proposals we had submitted to us, having conference calls, video calls, 
We chose a vendor, and this is how it breaks down. 154,500 for the gym. I don't have to read all these numbers, but as you can see, the total cost is going to be $306,000. So the next logical question is, how do we anticipate paying for this? This is an example of how our ministries and our community are the backbone of what happens here. Our history of golf tournaments said, of course we will contribute. They're providing $100,000 towards the replacement of the HVACs. Greek Fest, $40,000. The Philoctahus, the gala committee, the Christmas experience. You can see how this all adds up. And we also had an anonymous personal donation who is willing to match up to $20,000 of parishioners' funds. You may look at this number and realize it's $20,000 off, and that is because the matching money is not in hand as of yet, so we're working with what's in hand and the definites. So this puts us at needing a capital campaign of $101,000 to raise to do this. Now, we, due to the supply chain delay, we have four to six months to wait for these items to be installed. So that leaves us with providing a deposit on the equipment and then the remaining balance at installation. So we need to get working on raising this money and we're going to need support of the whole community to do it. Does anyone have any questions <coughs> regarding this capital improvement? <coughs> 